Hey, this is Vo from Vocal Pockets, and I'm here to teach you how to use groove builders to make music more authentic to you, find the right groove and bounce for your beats, and develop your signature groove. This video consists of two parts. The first part will show you how to add and save groove builders in Logic Pro X. The second part will show you how to apply groove builders. Let's start with adding and saving groove builders. Your download may include a Logic Pro X template with groove builders already set up. In case either your download does not come with a template, your version of Logic is not compatible with a template, or you otherwise want to add more group builders to an existing template, here's what to do. Use either the Finder on your Mac or the browser within Logic to locate the folder where the MIDI version of group builders are stored on your computer. For this demo, I'm using the browser on the right hand side. By using this method, I can easily see the group builder files and play before and after examples that give me a sense of the bounce that the particular groove builder can add. When you look at groove builders, you'll see a naming convention. Here's what everything means. First, you'll see a number. Groove builders are numbered from one to an end number, with groove builder one having the most significant timing impact when applied at 100%. In other words, groove builder one is going to have more swing and will move the notes more than groove builder 15, for example. Each number groove builder has a different VD4H profile. VD4H stands for velocity designed for hi-hats and is designed to give your hi-hats more bounce, though you can use this feature on other elements of your track like conga patterns to get some fun results. Next in the naming convention, V pocket stands for vocal pockets. The next letters represent the genre that inspired the groove builder. Then you'll see the actual name and title of the groove builder. And then finally, you have the timing settings. With respect to timing settings, for many styles of music, 1 16th note quantization will be sufficient. If you have more than 16 hits of a particular instrument in a measure, you can use a more granular timing setting like 1 32nd. If you only have 7 hits of a particular instrument, you can either use 1 8th or 1 16th. In short, if you choose 1 16th, all your notes are moved to the nearest 16th note grid. If you choose 1 8th, all your notes are moved to the nearest 8th note grid. Finally, with respect to the timing settings, if you see a T in front of the timing settings, it means that the groove builder is designed for triplet bass feelings. Here in my arrangement window, I already have some groove builders added. And it's easy to add more. You can drag them one by one onto an existing track. Or you could select multiple and add them all at once. When doing so, Logic may create multiple instrument tracks. If Logic creates multiple instrument track, go to the top of the channel strip and select Reset Channel Strip Settings because we don't need any instrument played or effects on this particular track. An easy way to do this is to open up the mixer, and I have Shortcut X enabled to do this. Select the additional tracks that Logic Pro X created for the Groove Builders, Go to the top of channel strip and click reset channel strip. Once you have all the groove builders that you'd like to try added to the sequencer, you can hide the tracks by right clicking on the track and selecting hide. If the groove builders are spread over multiple tracks, you can consider consolidating them into a folder and then deleting any XX tracks. To use Groove Builders, locate the Region Inspector. I like to open it as a float and I have the shortcut Option R enabled to do so. The Region Inspector is typically located at the top left of your song. You can also search for it using Logic search functionality in the toolbar. Highlight all of the MIDI Groove Builders and then on the Region Inspector, go to Quantize and then go to the drop down where it says make groove template and select. Now if you go back to the region inspector and click quantize, you can see all the groove builders listed. Once you do this process once, you won't have to do it again for new songs if you save this as a template and open up the project as a template when you're creating a new song. To save this as a template, go to file and save as template. Then when you open up Logic next time, 
open up the template and your Groove Builders will already be set up. Now let's transition to applying Groove Builders to find a groove that speaks to us and discover our signature groove. First, we'll set up a standard beat that will apply Groove Builders to. Within your product download, you should see three MIDI drum files marked with quantized to the grid in parentheses. I've added those to my project. There's a MIDI file called hi-hat, which you should use to trigger a hi-hat sound. There's a MIDI file called kick, which you should use to trigger a kick sound. And there's a MIDI file called snare, which you should trigger a snare sound of your choice. No matter whether you're using a drum kit or a sampler for your sounds, feel free to move the location of the notes up and down the piano roll to find a sound of your liking. You do not need to import the tempo information for this project. Let's create at a tempo of 100 BPM. Let's select the hi-hat track and apply a Groove Builder by selecting a Groove Builder in the Region Inspector. And I'll select one inspired by a funk song. Now, here's how to think about applying Groove Builders. To use an analogy, if your beat is food, Groove Builders are seasoning. And without seasoning, food can be bland. When you apply seasoning to a dish, you start at zero and slowly add seasoning to taste. In other words, you don't dump all the seasoning in at once and then try to pare it back. Use the same seasoning approach when applying Groove Builders. Start with the timing strength at zero and slowly blend up the amount by clicking with your mouse and dragging up to amount that you like. After you find a timing amount that you like, you now get to add one of my favorite features, which is VD4H or velocity design for hi-hats. Apply the seasoning approach here as well. Click with your mouse and slowly increase the cue velocity in the region inspector to an amount that feels good to you. I'll do that now, and you'll start to see the notes shift on the bottom of my screen. So here's where we started. And here's where we got in a few seconds with Group Builders. Now, we've only touched the hi-hats. There are five creative decisions that we can make from here, and this is how you start developing your signature groove. The five creative decisions are as follows. We can leave the kick and snare as is. Two, uniformity, which means we apply the same groove builder at the same quantized strength as the hi-hats. Three, sub-uniformity, which means we apply the same groove builder at a different quantized strength than the hi-hats. So for the hi-hats, if the quantized strength is 57, perhaps for the kick and snare, we only use 24%. Four, mix, which means we choose a different groove builder for the kick and snare. And then five, submix. Submix means dividing a track into two and using a different groove builder for each part. For example, if I wanted to use submix on the hi-hats, I could use one groove builder for the first eight hits and a different groove builder for the next eight hits. For this demo, I'll use mix for the kick and snare. I'll select the groove builder inspired by a R&B song and start with the timing strength at zero and slowly blend it into my liking. All right, so that sounds good to me. So here's where we started. And here's where we are now. You as a producer, you're using different sounds. Perhaps you're producing at a different tempo. So the groove builders that you select and the amount that you add them is totally in your control. And that's one of the great things about groove builders is that you're in control about how much groove and bounce that you add. I may decide to add a melody to this drum beat later. And for that particular melody, I might choose a third or a different groove builder, or I might match that melody's groove builder to the kick and snare or to the hi-hat. One way to tell if a groove builder is making an impact, other than using your ears, is to do the Mary Had a Little Lamb test. Well, what's that? 
Play a track with the crew builder and repeat the line, Mary had a little lamb. Then play the track without the crew builder. And if your enunciation of Mary had a little lamb is different, you could tell the crew builder is making an impact. So I'll do that here. I'll play the track with the crew builder and I'll let you repeat the line, Mary had a little lamb, however you'd like to. And then I'll play the version of the track that is completely quantized. Quantized version. I usually season my tracks with Groove Builders until I myself am able to come up with the flow. That way, if I send the beat to an artist and they say, this is cool, I'm trying to figure out what to do with it, I could pitch a flow to them that may lead to the next catchy hook or flow, and I'm adding that much more value to the relationship, and you could do the same when you are using Groove Builders. Something else to keep in mind is that if you ever switch samples or add effects to your sounds, you can easily recalibrate the right by bringing the quantize back to zero and increasing it to your liking based on the sounds that you may have modified. So thus far, we've applied Groove Builders to MIDI tracks. The great thing about them in Logic is that you can also apply the timing feature to audio. Where this comes in handy is if you have loops from a loop kit or you get stems from an engineer and the bounce isn't exactly like you envisioned, you can apply Groove Builders to get closer to the bounce that you are looking for. And it's easy to do this. What I'll do is I'll create an audio copy of the hi-hats. Then I'll turn on flex mode in Logic Pro X. You could try out the different algorithms. I usually stick with slicing and then select the Groove Builder, bring the timing strength to zero and slowly increase it to taste. You should be able to see the start time of the hi-hats shifting on the grid. Turn on flex mode. And then I can select a different groove builder for this. As soon as I select it, you'll see those notes shift. But when applying, I'll go to zero and slowly increase the quantize strength. All right, great. Now let's say you're the type of producer that starts with melodies and samples first. Whether it be a MIDI melody or a sample that you received from a pack, those samples and melodies have their own bounce to them and you can use Groove Builders to find the groove that's best suited for those samples and melodies. And here's how I do this. Draw 16 hi-hat notes and then apply the timing information like we discussed to find a pocket in space that matches the melody or sample. Then you can take the timing amount that you use and applied it to your other percussive instruments. Or as we discussed before, you could use sub uniformity, mix, or submix. This is what it sounds like completely on the grid. Now I'll use Groove Builders to find the right bounce for this melody. I'll just play the hi-hat, so I'm muting the kick and snare. Pop back up the region inspector. I'll reset everything. Bring the timing strength down to zero, and we'll play. And now I'll bring in the kick and snare and I'll apply those at the same quantized strength. So the hi-hat's at 38, I'll match these at 38. Where we started. Where we are with group builders. Finally, I'll share some additional creative fun. If you use a drum plugin that provides the ability to trigger different samples depending on the velocity of the note, you could come up with some really fun results. Here's an example.
you could potentially use a technique like this for the main part of your song or for sections like the bridge or the outro to give your track more variation. This technique also works well if you wanted to use pitch versions of a hi-hat. For example, if you have a primary hi-hat sound and transpose it up or down a few semitones for certain hits of the hi-hat, you can really experiment with different feelings in that respect using Groove Builders, and it's easy to change the velocity or VD4H part of Groove Builders. So when you change that velocity amount, you might get different results depending on the percentage that you're using. So I'll end this video with a challenge. For your next three beats, make completely quantized versions, and then create a separate version using crew builders and the techniques that we talked about today. See which version sounds more authentic to you. Feel free to tag us on Instagram at Vocal Pockets with any of the videos of you using Groove Builders. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this was helpful, and if it was, please like and subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the rest of your day, and hopefully that day is spent making music.